Hey everyone, welcome back to the Valley Egg Pilot Channel. It is time to go to Nebraska and do some 502 simulator stuff. Let's go. It is March 14th today. I am departing my homestead in Minnesota. And as you can see, corn harvest is just about to wrap up. Yep, in March. I don't know what the percentage of corn acres that got left in the ground were up here, but it was a lot. The snow is starting to melt though. It's 22 degrees. We've been thinking about airplanes. I'm dreaming of turbine startups at night. It's getting to be go time. So I am off to Fargo right now, Fargo, North Dakota. I'm gonna meet up with some friends there, stay overnight. It's a 10 hour and 45 minute drive from where I'm at. I'm gonna hit the road right away in the morning for a nine hour drive to North Platte, Nebraska, where I am going to be in the 502 simulator the University of Nebraska has. A uh, three day course, I talked to him on the phone the other day. Two days of solid instruction, and then uh, third day is gonna be kind of a wrap up and review and I'll head home Wednesday night. So how this whole entire thing came about was a gentleman named Riley Farter, who has been a good mentor of mine. When we were at the national convention this year in Florida, he decided to purchase this three-day turbine transition course. Thank you to him, he sold it to us so that I could go do that turbine transition training. I'm so glad he did that. Uh, again, thank you, Riley. It's an awesome opportunity, I'm glad to learn whatever I'm about to learn. instead of taking the interstate. Uh, wow, did I take some back roads and really, really got off the beaten path. I'm like three, four hours on end of not seeing any civilization. So Nebraska, I have explored your your, uh, your vast wilderness today. Um, gonna go grab a bite to eat, some cameras out charging, get ready to go for tomorrow. Um, I did talk to them about filming and they said it would be all right. Um, I don't know exactly how it's gonna go, but We'll see you tomorrow, I guess. So, see you tomorrow morning. So on day one, I met with Tom May, the sim instructor at the extension facility. We begin the training by going through the 502 manual. Initially, we reviewed all pertinent information about the first sim flight, which was general aircraft and power plant information along with their operations and startup procedure. The most important part of day one was learning how to properly start the Pratt Whitney PT6A-34 AG turbine engine on the Air Tractor 502B. So with that we begin uh, the sim flight with multiple rounds of starting the airplane. So, fuel boost pump comes on, hit the starter, the are coming on, there's 15%. The tricky part is scanning between the NG gauge, which essentially measures RPMs, and the ITT gauge. ITT stands for internal turbine temp, and if that temp exceeds what the engine can handle, you'll have a welded turbo on your hands, something your employer and insurance company won't appreciate. Next I did a simulated hot start where you'll see the ITT spike outside the green arc. Once the ITT crosses outside the limitations of the engine, fuel must be cut in the engine dry motor, which means turning the engine over without fuel to bring cool air and remove any more fuel in the engine. 
This is a hung start where the secondary fuel nozzles are not pumping fuel into the engine and it does not fully start. 15%. Notice the NG will not rise above 30%. Still not really coming up. Once the problem is recognized, I shut everything off and dry motor the engine down to 200 degrees. And it's on there. Bringing that back. Boost pump comes off, igniter's up. Finally, we have a no light where the engine never ignites the fuel going into it. Nothing, nothing clearly a problem. Let back, turn that back. And then, and so I, now, when I would say at that point your engine's cool because you never got fire into it, right? So it's not a heat issue at that point. So, but it's trying to get that fuel out. I would say motor it for about 60 seconds. Right. You know, you can do it up to three minutes, but I would do it for about 60. seconds. So after practicing the startups, we took off and started making some field passes. The whole purpose of this was to get a feel for the airplane and how it responds. The sim is a little bit touchy compared to the real airplane, but that's alright because it still did a great job of teaching me. One part of the sim that was very realistic was the need to use flaps while turning. So the sim does live up to the flap tractor name. After the field passes, we started walking through emergencies, which I'm not going to get into here in part one. I'll cover them in part two where I'll compare day one response times to day three. That'll show you guys how much my emergency response time increases throughout my training from the beginning to end. So fast forward to day two where we begin the day with some more in-depth review about the engine and aircraft. Then back into the sim. So guys, I'm here at the University of Nebraska Extension. Sorry I didn't talk to you. Uh, when I got here and do a little introduction yesterday, but um, just wanted to focus on the flight training aspect of everything. So today I'll introduce you to Tom, who's uh, running the simulator here and talk to you a little bit more about what we're doing. So right now we're gonna hop back in. I'm gonna get this thing started. Um, and today, instead of Tom letting me know when the emergencies are coming and what they're gonna be, I'm gonna have to recognize them on my own and respond correctly. So here we go. So here we are at about 500 feet of ferrying altitude and Tom's going to throw me an IMC and see how long it takes me to get hurt or get out. Before I entered the clouds I was using the horizon to keep my airplane straight and level. Now since that reference is gone I have to rely on my instruments to keep her straight. The only issue is most egg aircraft lack the instrumentation to adequately fly in IFR, so I have nothing that will tell me immediately what the attitude of the airplane is. I have three instruments to reference, the airspeed indicator, altimeter, and compass. The airspeed indicator is telling me whether I'm climbing, which is indicated by a loss of speed, or descending, indicated by an increase in speed. But its most important job is showing how close to a stall I am. The altimeter is showing also whether I'm climbing or descending, the compass shows if I'm turning or flying straight. This is an extremely difficult and busy task to perform. I am instrument rated, but haven't been current for a year, so this was very difficult. I could only focus on my altitude at first because one, I was low to the ground, and two, task saturation was setting in so I wasn't watching the compass. After I gained some altitude, I began trying to use my compass to stop turning and bring my wings level. This isn't exactly a walk in the park either because the compass spins the opposite direction of your turn, unlike a heading indicator that would spin the direction of the turn. So I had to bank the airplane in the direction that the compass was spinning to stop the turn. It sounds like a simple problem to work through, but imagine this in a real life situation. I might not have been able to work through it. Now I survived every flight into IMC in the sim, which is a good thing. But the point wasn't to learn how to fly an air tractor through IMC. The point was to realize how overwhelming and dangerous flight into low vis can be and to avoid that scenario completely. It makes you think maybe I should stay on the ground on those iffy marginal days. I'll tell you what though, I couldn't keep doing this much longer. It's getting harder and harder to pay attention. Sorry, you wouldn't fly out 
Right. Okay. So you're kind of beating the odds there a little bit. But don't let that. <laughs> no, no, it's only going to get worse. Yeah. Towards the end of day two, we drove down the road to the University of Nebraska Extension Pesticide Technology Lab. Here they primarily test all kinds of nozzles for droplet size, pattern, and coverage in their assortment of spray chambers. They also do herbicide efficacy testing on different weed species. Now on top of the spray chambers, they have two wind tunnels as well. One low speed tunnel for testing ground application nozzles and one high speed that's used for aerial application testing. Each wind tunnel has a laser that measures the size and amount of droplets coming out of the nozzle. As you can see here, the nozzle is moved up and down vertically to measure every aspect of the pattern, which is then recorded and stored on the computer screen. Hey everybody, we're over at the University of Nebraska Extensions. He's been walking me through the simulator today. We did a lot of emergencies, getting muscle memory and things down like that. We went into IMC a couple times, trying to fly the 502 on just an airspeed indicator, altimeter and a compass. And uh, he gave me a run for my money a couple times. I'm definitely wore out. Like I said, this is Tom May. He's an egg pilot from here in Nebraska. Tommy, go ahead and tell us a little bit about your work experience in the egg aviation industry. I've been in the egg aviation industry for uh, well over 20 years. I have experience in several makes and models of aircraft, starting from Pawnees all the way up to 802 air tractors. Uh, I've got a little over 6,000 hours flight experience with 5,000 hours of that being ag time. I've flown in several different states, uh, several different crops. Uh, I was contacted here a couple of years ago about potentially uh, instructing this simulator program uh, here in North Platte from a colleague of mine. And with a little talk and a little coercion from the staff here, we kind of put a program together and that's what Andy's here doing is going through the program we put together. Um, he's actually doing our three-day turbine transition course, which is something that uh, guys that are going from piston engines to turbine engine transition into, they can uh, come through our course and go through uh, a variety of things, including you know the startup procedures for the turbine engine, emergency procedures. Um, we go through several different components of the engine and how the engine operations, you know, right and wrong ways to operate the engines. And then, you know, like Andy also mentioned, we put yourself in certain weather conditions, IMC conditions, you know, to uh, give you awareness and troubles you can get yourself into and things that can go wrong. And we also have a lot of conversation throughout the three-day period about uh, experiences I've been in, you know, I let the student ask me a lot of different questions of my experiences and try to answer the questions uh, that they have to the best of my knowledge. The thing about the simulator, I guess, is that the tool that it gives us is actually hands-on muscle memory to get yourself through an emergency situation in the cockpit, which is something you cannot actually do in an actual uh, turbine engine aircraft um, unless it actually, the problem actually arises, and that's what we're trying to do is, is give that student that capability of recognizing the problem, reacting to it, and being able to get himself and the aircraft on the ground safely. So this is not something just designed at the beginning in young ag pilots too, it's something that we would like to see experienced ag pilots come through as a recurrent training to bring themselves in and get recurrent with emergency procedures and refresher 
refresh their memory and abilities to that point also when that that's really kind of the basics you know what we do here and we also you know we do offer a one two and three day course you know and we can also tailor courses to the specific students needs you know whether they have zero ag time to 20,000 hours ag if there's something they want to come here and learn and do with the simulator just let me know and we can do what we can to make sure they get the best experience possible and gain the most knowledge uh, possible for what they're doing here when they come. Tom's going to give me a link. I'm going to throw that in the description of the video so that you guys can go ahead and take a look at um, what they have to offer here with the simulator. Tom's done a great job of teaching me so far. I've, I've learned a lot. I definitely feel more confident already as I start to move towards the turbine aircraft that I'm going to fly this summer. So a test review day tomorrow. We'll try and debrief a little bit with you guys tomorrow when we get done with that. So we'll catch you later.